What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video where you will get the latest news about Liverpool's transfer activity with uh, Mamar Dashvili, the Liverpool goalkeeper, being very close to signing for Liverpool. But first, let me tell you, happy Premier League day. I'm also opening a fantasy Premier League mini league for you guys to join in and uh, you can see the code on the screen, but there is a link in the video's description. If you click that, you will automatically join my fantasy Premier League. I did really really well last season finishing the top 100,000 players so I'm really proud of my achievement and this season I might post the, the weekly scores of my Premier League um, you know fantasy team so if you want to follow my journey follow me on my Twitter and on my Facebook link is in the video description. So Valencia goalkeeper Mamar Dashvili has been linked to Liverpool and he's very keen to join Liverpool and he has already given the green light for the transfer to be completed. Mamar Dashvili already agreed personal terms with Liverpool that was confirmed by Fabrizio Mano and according to a report from Spanish publication AS, Valencia are wanting a fee of around 40 million euros and Liverpool have already had a few offers for Mamar Dashvili rejected but now it looks like Liverpool are ready to pay that 40 million euro fee and the new offer by Liverpool is expected it to be close to the asking price so Liverpool will offer 35 million euros plus an additional 5 million euros uh, including bonuses and Mama Dashvili could actually sign a, like a pre-contract agreement to join Liverpool in 2025 or even in 2026 and in the meantime Valencia will loan Mama Dashvili to Bournemouth because if he signs for Liverpool right now then we can't loan Mama Dashvili to a fellow Premier League club and Liverpool are planning for the future so so they are future proofing the goalkeeper position that doesn't mean Alisson will definitely leave Liverpool in one or two seasons but it's too good of a chance to pass up this opportunity to sign a goalkeeper who is only 23 years old who is destined to become one of the best goalkeepers in the world he is a future world-class goalkeeper and those are very rare on the market and also you look at other big clubs Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Man City all have goalkeepers above 30 years old and even Atletico Madrid all the best goalkeepers in the world are pretty much over 30 years old now so sooner or later these big clubs will want to sign the next big goalkeeper coming through so Liverpool getting Mamar Dashvili now is a fantastic piece of business Diario AS the Spanish newspaper is reporting that Liverpool have raised their offer which is now 35 million euros plus bonuses and that is closer to Valencia's 40 million euro valuation and Mama Dashili accepts the deal to spend not one but two seasons on loan. He will only play for Liverpool in 2026 but he's fine with that because his dream is to play for one of the really big clubs uh, and another Spanish newspaper Super Deporte is reporting that Valencia are shocked that Mama Dashvili completely changed his mind in favor of a move to Liverpool. He initially said that he wouldn't leave to be a backup anywhere but the proposal from Liverpool was too tempting that he couldn't say no and basically Liverpool promised Mama Dashvili that he will be first choice goalkeeper in one or two years as soon as Alisson leaves and that is too good of an opportunity for Mama Dashvili to turn down because no other big club so far has shown a real interest in Mama Dashvili and even if he signs for a big club in one or two years there is no guarantees that he will be first choice at Liverpool Mama Dashvili is getting guarantees that he will be basically Liverpool's first choice goalkeeper in two seasons. Alisson's contract expires in 2027 but maybe Alisson indicated privately behind the scenes that in one or two years he might leave Liverpool and he might join a Saudi league or he might go back to Brazil. And the Marca newspaper which is one of the biggest newspapers in Spain is reporting that uh, Valencia have been left uh, baffled and surprised that uh, by how things played out around Mamar Dashvili because uh, he was also very adamant about leaving to a club uh, without European football but he's agreed to go on loan to Bournemouth just to get his move to Liverpool. So Mama Dashvili previously said to Valencia, I'm only leaving to a club who plays in Europe, who are a big club, and instead he's going on loan to Bournemouth just to get his move to Liverpool in 2025. And if you compare Oblak to Mama Dashvili, and remember, Atletico Madrid finished in the Champions League places, Valencia were a mid-table club last season. Uh, they played the same amount, similar amount of games, and they had, they had the 
same amount of clean sheets, even though Valencia have a much worse defense. Mamada Shuri still kept 13 clean sheets in 37 games. He made a total of 108 saves, 72% save percentage, and he also made 78 saves inside the box, which is absolutely brilliant. He also recovered 308 balls, accurate long balls 208, and that will be very important in Arna Slot's uh, tactics that the goalkeeper has good feet and he can play long balls accurately to uh, his teammates. And Liverpool think that this 30 million pound uh, price tag is an, represents excellent value for money. Remember that we paid like 65 million for Alisson a lot of years ago, so now that would be 80 or 90 million pounds adjusted for inflation. And the, the options available to Liverpool are still being explored. Uh, one possibility is that Mamadashvili really stays at Valencia for another, another season before going to Liverpool in 2025. Of course, Liverpool could sign Mamadashvili right now officially and we could loan him out to a club outside of the Premier League, but Liverpool would prefer Mamadashvili to get experience in the Premier League. And Richard Hughes, of course, has good connections at Bournemouth because he used to work there. Alisson will clearly be first choice this season, but we don't know what Alisson's future is. We don't know what kind of talks they had internally. There has been speculation that Alisson would receive interest from Saudi Arabia and maybe Alisson would want to go to Saudi Arabia for one or two years to earn a big big um, contract and then he could go back to his homeland in Brazil. Kelleher also would consider his future before the new season but right now it looks like Alisson will be first choice, Kelleher will be second choice, Mamadashvili will either stay at Valencia or go on loan to Bournemouth and Liverpool could right now sign Mamadashvili in a pre-contract agreement that he joined in 2025 and but Valencia need to sell and uh, they they are really desperate for cash because they are not in a go good financial position having missed out on European qualifying for the European football so their owner Peter Lim would accept an offer of around 35 to 40 million euros sorry and Mamar really knows that uh, his stock right now is very high having had a brilliant euros with Georgia he was absolutely terrific in the tournament and he also had a very good season at Valencia and I think right now not that many big clubs are looking for a goalkeeper so it makes sense for Liverpool to sign Mamadashvili now because if we wait one more season then a lot of big clubs will be starting to looking for goalkeepers and Mamadashvili will be top of the young goalkeepers list I think out of the goalkeepers who are 25 years old or younger Mamadashvili is certainly the best one in my opinion. Fabio Simano also confirmed that Liverpool keep working on several opportunities in the market and uh, I would keep the door open for movement in the final two weeks of the window. But we want Ed to see action. We don't want to see words. We want to see action. We want to see Liverpool signing new players. This is the first time in nine years that Liverpool haven't signed a player officially going into the first game of the Premier League season. So that shows you how rarely it happened. And the last time I think it a new manager didn't sign a new player before their first game in the Premier League was when Unai Emery took over at Arsenal straight after Arsene Wenger. That wasn't that was a few years ago as well. Liverpool have been offered the chance of signing Marco Verratti, but there is no real interest there because he would also be just a stopgap, uh, being 31 years old. Uh, and uh, I will also talk about Arne Slot's press conference because he said something, some very inter interesting things about Liverpool's transfer market and he specifically talked about Martin Zubimendi as well. And by Leverkusen have identified Sepp van der Merck as a potential centre-back target if Kosunu is sold. It's very likely that he could be sold before the window ends and Sepp is very highly rated at Leverkusen. I think that would be brilliant because Leverkusen has, has a lot of money so he would, they would definitely be able to pay the 20 million euro asking price of Liverpool and if Kusunu leaves, that Sepp van der Berg could play regularly at Leverkusen. Trent Oxford, according to Paul Gorst, the senior journalist working at the Liverpool Echo, he is determined not to have talks over his future be played out in public out of respect for his boyhood club. What this means, we don't really know. 
it's just uh, it doesn't really want these talks to be public but you know the Liverpool fans deserve to know what is going on with the contract talks at the moment it's dead silence I think Liverpool want to get the transfer business done until the end of August and then in early September we will ramp up the talks with Salah Van Dijk and Tranok Swanod but how successful those talks will be will be determined by how many and what kind of players Liverpool sign in the transfer market. Lucas Stevenson is of course joining Dundee United on a season-long loan and also Cody Gagpo said that Arne Slot sees him as a right left winger. That's how I think he sees me. So Cody Gagpo will alternate with Luis Diaz on the left wing. Diogo Jota will alternate with Darwin Nunez as a striker. And Mo Salah will play on the right wing, but we don't really have another player who can play right wing. Harvey Elliott, Soboslai, Van Doek can play there, but they are, that's not their be- that's not you know their best position. Van Doek's uh, the best position is the right wing, but he's going out on loan, I think. What I didn't like about Arneslot's press conference is that uh, I feel sorry for Arneslot because he needs to answer a lot of questions about Liverpool's transfer activity when he was advertised to be only a head coach and not a manager. So it's Richard Hughes' responsibility and Michael Edwards' responsibility to do transfers. Richard Hughes should be the one being questioned about Liverpool's lack of transfers and Arne Slot has to do all the public speaking about player contracts, transfers and Richard Hughes should be the guy answering these questions. It's not fair on Arne Slot because that's not his main job and main responsibility at Liverpool to do these transfers. Also a word on Adam Wharton. Chris Palace are looking for a hundred million pounds for him so I think we can safely say he's ruled out. He's only 20 years old. He's a huge talent. Chris Palace know what a huge talent he is so they want to keep him at all costs and maybe uh, trying to land a spot in Europe next season if, um, even though without Oli say that will be tough. And Arne Slot specifically spoke about Subimendi which was a little bit surprising. I don't think he would have named him but the journalist asked him how he feels about Liverpool not being able to sign Zubimendi and he said I said many times I think our squad is really strong it's not so easy to find players that can help us or can even strengthen the squad I agree with that part but it's literally Richard Hughes's job and Michael Edwards job and they had the whole summer and basically the whole year since uh, we lost Fabinho they had one year to identify a long list of defensive midfielders and yes not all of them are suited to Arne Slot's style but we knew that Arne Slot is going to be our manager since what May so we had more than enough time to identify enough defensive midfielders and not just Zubimendi and but Arne Slot said Martin Zubimendi was one of them to be fair but he decided not to come and then we go forward with the ones we have and those ones have done really well in preseason. we are in a good place and in the background Richard Hughes is trying to strengthen the squad and unfortunately Zubimendi decided not to come Richard Hughes did everything he tried everything to bring him in but if a player doesn't want to come it's obvious that he is not coming Arneslot is basically saying it wasn't entirely Richard Hughes' fault. If Richard Hughes doesn't identify another player as our second choice, then that's completely his fault. And I said all along, if Richard Hughes doesn't sign a defensive midfielder for Liverpool, he should be sacked in September. I know that's a very strong statement from me, but I, I'm fully behind that. Liverpool have a very good squad. But remember, we got knocked out pretty easily by Atalanta last season. We finished third. We, uh, we lost a lot of games in the last one and a half months of the season. Uh, Liverpool's title challenge collapsed and fizzled out when injuries caught up with us. My hope is that Liverpool's uh, injury situation will be better this season. But we can't bank on that. We don't know whether that will be the case. But Liverpool still lost Joao Matip, Thiago and Adrian from the squad and we also sold Fabio Carvalho and Bobby Clark even though they didn't play a big part last season I know but still Liverpool's squad is even weaker than last season you can't hide from that fact and yes Jurgen Klopp left the team in a good place but Liverpool need to build on that and Arnesot was asked if you don't strengthen then you are weaker than you were before that argument I don't understand that's a bit weird because normally you would either stay the same or improve on the training ground that's true Arne Slot also recognizes that maybe what you mean is if the clubs around you strengthen then the team 
their teams, then maybe um, they become better and you are going behind. You are falling behind. And that's what is happening with Liverpool. Look at how much Brighton spent. They spent almost 200 million euros. Look at how much Aston Villa spent. Look at how much Arsenal have spent. Man City have spent some money as well. Liverpool are falling behind the other teams. And this is the next two weeks are absolutely crucial for Liverpool's future. We cannot go into another season without an out-and-out world-class defensive midfielder or somebody who is very close to world-class. And don't tell me there are no defensive midfielders better than Walter Wendel because that's absolute nonsense. I'm not buying that. I'm not believing that. And it's, uh, this is on Richard Hughes and the Liverpool owners to get this right. Liverpool already sold players worth 50 million, so the money is there. Sign Bruno Guimaraes or Alan Varela or Ederson from Atalanta. There are more than enough players who are better than Endo and who would be fantastic transfers, fantastic signings for Liverpool. Anasot said, uh, it's not always true that if you bring in new players, the team becomes stronger. But I also believe in general that every player in the team needs to have perspective on playing time. And that's true. Sometimes you can get weaker if you don't bring in the right player. It can disrupt the dressing room. It can bring the whole uh, vibe of the team down. And also, you know, the young players deserve playing time. Bajcetic should get enough playing time. But maybe now we are not loaning out Bajcetic. I haven't heard anything new on that. But honestly, said, if you keep bringing players in, sometimes the energy in the group do goes down as well. Yeah, Chelsea is the best example. They signed 35 players in two years. Just to put that into context, Liverpool, if you go back 35 signings, I think it's... Bobby Firmino, even before Jurgen Klopp came in, so nine years ago. Liverpool signed 35 players in nine years, Chelsea signed 35 players in two years. And that's not how you should build a squad, definitely. But Liverpool are literally on the other end of the spectrum, signing zero players. And uh, honestly said, I said many times, we, and I mean with we, I mean Richard and me, are trying to strengthen the squad. I, th I think if we think we found someone, we try to bring him in. And the un unfortunately, the one we thought could help us said no. But in the background, Richard is still trying to improve the team. But my main focus at the moment is fully on Ipswich. And yeah, that's the problem. Arneslot shouldn't answer questions about transfers. He should be just coaching the team and Richard Hughes should be the one, of course, identifying players and bringing them in. So huge pressure on FSG and Richard Hughes. I will still hold off on my judgment of the transfer window until it ends. But Liverpool are leaving it very, very late. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.